Hello, everyone. In this research review, we're going to discuss an article that was published in the Journal of Physiology back in 2015. So it's a couple of years old now, but uh, I think it's a really interesting study, and it's certainly uh, applicable to kind of some of the current trends that we see in the sports and fitness industry regarding cold water immersion or kind of dunk tanks, uh, people jumping into large tubs of, of cold ice water. And so the title of this study was Post-Exercise Cold Water Immersion Attenuates Acute Anabolic Signaling and Long-Term Adaptations in Muscle to Strength Training. So kind of a mouthful of a title, uh, but this study is really unique in that they set it up is kind of a two-part study. So um, what their kind of primary aims were, were to really just look at how cold water immersion after workouts was going to influence both some of the acute kind of biomolecular signaling uh, that plays a role in muscle growth and some of the adaptations that we see to strength training. So they were looking both at the short term, how does cold water immersion influence that? And then also long term, uh, if you were to utilize cold water immersion after your workouts, let's say after 12 weeks of regular strength training, what is that going to do to the long-term adaptations? And so for that first part, um, they recruited nine males and they had them do just a single bout of strength training, uh, just single leg strength training exercise. So very isolated uh, and very kind of localized to a, a single limb here. And what they did is they collected muscle biopsies before and then after uh, at 2, 24, and 48 hours after that bout of exercise. And they were, again, looking at some of the acute signaling mechanisms that, like I said, play a role in some of the longer-term adaptations, meaning if some of these uh, acute signaling mechanisms are hindered or uh, mitigated, in other words, reduced um, in any kind of sense, that would indicate that uh, post-exercise anabolic signaling is somewhat compromised by utilizing utilizing this cold water immersion. And that's kind of what they found with this study. Uh, so several of those markers were reduced um, or kind of down-regulated to a greater degree than what they saw in the other condition. And I didn't mention that earlier, but uh, they were comparing cold water immersion here to an active recovery. So those were kind of the two conditions that they looked at in that acute type of phase of this study. So uh, their conclusions there with that first name were that these data suggest that cold water immersion attenuates the acute changes in satellite cell numbers and activity of some of the kinases or proteins and enzymes that regulate muscle hypertrophy. Uh, so again, this is kind of telling us that if you jump in a cold tub after your strength training, you might be hindering or compromising some of the, the anabolic signaling mechanisms or some of your body's kind of normal responses to strength training that play a role in putting on muscle mass or leading to increases in strength over time. So that is kind of concerning to see that type of a, a response following cold water immersion. And they didn't see that following that bout of active recovery and that other condition. So if we look at how this plays out over 12 weeks, uh, so again, one group participated in or both groups, excuse me, participated in 12 weeks of strength training, only two days a week. So uh, I would say kind of a lower end in terms of difficulty of a strength training program. Uh, and then one of those groups um, were exposed to either 10 minutes of cold water immersion or active recovery after each of those training sessions. And then they looked at changes in strength and muscle mass over the course of that 12 week period. And they found strength and muscle mass was increased more in the active recovery group compared to the cold water immersion group. And then some of the ways they assessed kind of strength performance, so they looked at isokinetic work. Uh, and so that increased 19%, type two muscle cross-sectional area increased 17%. And then the number of myonuclei per fiber increased 26% in that active recovery bout. And they didn't see any significant increases in any of those parameters in the cold water immersion group. So like we saw in the uh, kind of acute phase of this study, long-term, some of these strength and muscle adaptations seem to be compromised in that group that did cold water immersion after their bouts of strength training. So uh, what we can kind of conclude from this study is that both short and long-term um, responses or adaptations to strength training are compromised if you engage in cold water immersion after your bouts of strength training. Now, does this mean you shouldn't ever do cold water immersion? Um, is it bad? Is it harmful? 
I would say it kind of depends. Uh, with a lot of these tools, there may be a time and a place for this. So uh, if you're you know, really sore or beat up during a tournament or kind of a period of, of you know, high intensity workouts where you still have to perform the next day or whatever the case may be, that might be a nice short, short term tool uh, because it can reduce soreness, um, reduce inflammation and things like that, which is obviously kind of ideal in some situations, but I don't know if I would recommend it continually every day after a workout or at least not in the immediate period following that workout. We don't really know what would happen if you were to do cold water immersion later in the day, you know, several hours after that strength workout. So that kind of question remains unknown, at least with this particular study. So uh, just kind of interesting findings here. And like I said, very pertinent to what a lot of people are doing right now with cold water immersion. And again, I, I don't want to demonize it. Uh, everyone you know, is, is welcome to kind of choose what they want, especially if it makes them feel better. Uh, but just know from a biomolecular standpoint and kind of a strength or muscle perform performance standpoint over time, you might be compromising some of your potential gains or improvements by again, engaging in this regular cold water immersion after your strength workouts. Thank you for listening to this research review. I hope you learned something um, and can better apply cold water immersion to your training and how you recover please go and check out clinicallypress.org now you can also get there via the dot com lots of big changes a lot of things we're excited about check it out a lot of things coming with nonprofit. more information to come we'll be getting a lot more consistent with this information but we appreciate you sticking with us um, over this long journey of clinically press i look forward to seeing where we can take it in the future